नमस्कार 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 सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल कंपेयर फिशेस एम्फीबियन रेप्टाइल बर्ड्स एंड मेमेल्स सम इम्पॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टर एक्चुअली सम इम्पॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टर यू नो आई हैव कंपेयर इट एंड वी विल सी दैट राइट दिस वीडियो यू नो इज आई मीन द इज बेस्ट फॉर दोज हु हैव कंप्लीटेड एन सी आर टी पोर्शन दो जो कंप्लीटेड एन सी आर टी बुक दिस वीडियोल दिस वीडियो इज गोइंग टू मोर हेल्प फॉर यू एंड दिस वीडियो इज फॉर दोज हु आर इन लेवेंथ एंड इट इज फॉर दोज हु आर गोइंग टू राइट नीट फाइन स्टूडेंट्स दोज हु आर गोइंग टू राइट सी यू ई टी ट्वेंटी now come to this video please but before going to video you know yesterday one excited thing happened i seen one movie in bangalore kantara oh my god it was awesome moving students i will request you all that if you are free if you have a time please go and watch that movie it will be you know you'll find yourself in a different i mean different planet you will find you will feel that you are part of this movie awesome movie i will i will i will I'll recommend you to see the movie kantara is originally kannada movie but as i seen actually hindi dub even dub also it was so powerful okay yeah so come back to video please fishes you know fishes we will different character will discuss fishes you know fishes they originated in ordovician period in devonian period they were dominant and the period in in which the organism originated you know we'll call it the period of origin and the period in which they were i mean the high number on this earth they were dominant on this earth will be called golden period so for fishes golden period is devonian amphibian they originated in devonian but in carboniferous was their golden period reptiles they originated in carboniferous period and the whole mesozoic era was their golden period mesozoic era include triassic jurassic cretaceous period triassic period jurassic period cretaceous period now you come to birds birds you know they originated into the mesozoic era only right and in the mesozoic in cenozoic era they are more dominant on this earth right now come to mammals they also originated in mesozoic era uh, and they were in cenozoic era they are dominant on this earth now if you will see the body temperature and all you will find that the fishes you know they are poikilotherm now question is that what is poikilotherm see student poikilotherms are those animals who unable to maintain their body temperature i mean when external temperature will change their body temperature also changes that's why we are calling them poikilotherm like you see the snake when external temperature like increase you know they will search cool place right when external temperature will start to reduce they will search warm places why because increase in temperature or decrease in temperature is changing their body temperature also that's why we'll call them poikilotherm so fishes are actually like that snake only they are poikilotherm amphibians are also poikilotherm reptiles are also poikilotherm but birds and mammals they can successfully regulate their body temperature that's why we'll call them homeothermic they are not poikilotherm they can maintain their body temperature like now or at present your body temperature is 37 degree celsius you go in any situation your body temperature is not going to change right so that means we mammals are homeotherm we can successfully regulate our body temperature fine birds are also homeotherm now come to which kind of vertebra present actually you know in the fishes amphicelous vertebra present and ophisthocelous vertebra present now question is that what is this amphicelous vertebra and ophisthocelous vertebra let's see see students 
you consider you know you consider that you standing like this you standing like a dog suppose this is you this is your tail okay and this is your two hand so this head end of the body will be called anterior end and another end of body will be called posterior end upper end will be called dorsal end and lower end will be called ventral end fine this is you head part is anterior now in this kind of vertebra like amphicoelous vertebra and ophistocoelous vertebra in the central part of vertebral bone in the central part of vertebral bone posterior side cavity is present but anterior side is convex okay so ophistho means you know back here back side cavity present right and then you come to next one that is amphicoelous amphicoelous means both anterior and posterior side cavity present in the vertebral bones it will help you know this cavity and all present in the centrum of the vertebral bone they will help in locking these all vertebrals okay so our fishes and amphibian have amphicoelous and ophistocoelous vertebra amphibians reptiles have procoelous vertebra procoelous vertebra is that vertebra where cavity is present at anterior side the front side they have cavity right and is present in amphibians and reptiles they have procoelous vertebra but birds and mammals have you know birds and mammals if you see they are birds are heterocoelous heterocoelous means there will be not regular pattern of cavity in their bone actually you know it's a kind of flight adaptation for creating more flexibility in their body nature have given home i mean the heterocoelous vertebra which have no fixed pattern of vertebral bones now we come to mammalians this mammalians you know they have amphibians have acoelous vertebra not amphiplatian but are you right acoelous vertebra this is you know is characteristic feature of the mammals they have acoelous vertebra acoelous vertebra means in the central part of the vertebral bone there will be not cavity and you know it's like this you see see here students like the here you see anti this is posterior side this is anterior side but cavity you will not find here both side cavity is not present both side you see it's equal this kind of vertebra is called acoelous vertebra okay so we discuss who have which kind of vertebra now come to occipital condyles what are these occipital condyles students see our head you know our cranium you know is joining our vertebral bone okay now the point where cranium join vertebral bone like in human our occipital bone bone form joint with the first vertebra that is atlas now in vertebral bone if two point for joining two we have two articulation side for joining of vertebra we will call them dicondylic and if only one joining side present here then we will call it monocondylic so it's all about you know the articulation surface between cranium and vertebral bone if that articular articulation surface is one we will call it monocondylar and if it is two we will call it dicondylar so fishes are dicondylar amphibians are dicondylar they are monocondylar they have only one you know joining place between vertebral bone and their cranium and they are also monocondylar birds and mammals are also birds uh, birds are also monocondylar reptiles are also monocondylar okay students and then you come to human which is belong to mammal mammal are dicondylar now come to type of teeth student 
if teeth is only one type we will call it homodont teeth if teeth is fixed to the upper part of the jaw like see this shaded part is teeth and this part is the uh, is the jaw so if teeth is fused with the upper part of the jaw this kind of teeth will be called acrodont teeth if teeth will appear many times in life we will call it polyphyodont teeth these all are the character of fishes you know yes now come to amphibian amphibians are homodont homodont means they have only one type of teeth and they are acto acrodont acrodont means you see in the jaw bone in the upper part simply they are fused just yes okay and then you come to reptiles they have also only one type of teeth and then birds which have not teeth human and like now come to mammals mammals cells mammals you know they are heterodont heterodont means different type of teeth are present then thicodont thicodont means teeth is you know teeth is fixed into the jaw bone teeth is fixed into the jaw bone then they are diphyodont diphyodont means they appear twice in a life and then they are pleurodont some of the snake you know they have pleurodont teeth like you see fang of the snake you know the longer teeth of the snake they are example of pleurodont teeth now compared to number of cervical vertebra fishes have not cervical vertebra amphibian have one cervical vertebra reptiles have two cervical vertebra but in chelone nine cervical vertebra are present in fishes it's not definite but in mammals there are seven cervical vertebra abnorm in some cases it's different like sea cow have six sloth bear have eight and the polar bear have eight vertebral cervical vertebra bone okay now come to number of chambers in the heart fishes have two chamber in the heart one atria one ventricle amphibians have three chambers in the heart and then reptiles you see reptiles you know in reptile if you see most of the reptile have three chamber in the heart but crocodile and all have four chim chamber in the heart okay now come to birds birds have four chamber in heart and mammals have four chamber in heart fishes have 10 pairs of cranial nerve amphibian have 10 pairs of cranial nerve reptile birds will have 12 12 pair of cranial nerves now come to ear bone you all know students in our body in our ear three bones are present malleus incus tapis but in the course of evolution in fishes there was no ear bones okay but in amphibian they had one ear bone that's called columella oris reptiles they have also columella oris birds have also columella oris and mammals have not columna columella columella oris they have three bones in their ear malleus incus tapis what are that bone students? Malleus incus tapis. Malleus incus tapis. Okay, now come to type of kidney. See, uh, our cyclostomata have, you know, pronephric kidney. But fishes have mesonephric kidney. Amphibian have mesonephric kidney. Reptile, birds and mammals have metanephric kidney. Now come to type of egg. See, this classification of egg, you know, we divided is on the basis of position or presence of the egg yolk. Egg yolk, you know, like egg you have eaten, not egg yolks. Yeah, egg yolk actually. So if you have eaten the egg, have you observed one yellow color structure? That yellow color structure is only egg yolk. This egg yolk provide nutrition to the growing embryo. Right, students? So, fishes have megalacethal egg. Megalacethal egg means egg have huge size of egg yolk. Then, mesolacethal egg. Mesolacethal egg, you know, it have... Mesolacethal egg have, egg have very small amount of egg yolk. 
okay now come to reptiles so reptiles have you know reptiles have megalocithal egg and telocithal egg megalocithal egg means large egg yolk present telolocithal means egg yolk is is present at the end of the body end of the egg at one end if you have you may if you have eaten in the egg somewhere boiled egg you have eaten so that black color part So egg you have eaten in that egg actually yellow color part is egg yolk. Okay students. So if it is bigger we will call it megalocythal and you see the normal board egg you see their egg is present at the end of the egg. That's why we will call them telolocythal also. Boards and mammals are both are megalocythal and telolocythal. Okay, telocythal means egg yolk will be present at the end, and then finally some rep mammals also lay egg, and that is microbial microlocythal egg means egg yolk is very less, and then they have alocythal egg egg yolk is absent. Like human egg, you see human egg have not egg yolk. Fine. So this is how we compare different type of common character present into the fishes amphibian reptile birds mammals remaining we will see in next video tab tak ke liye namaskar